Hi there, my name is Nathan Wubina, and I'm one of the artistic directors of the Boulder Children's Chorale. I'm very excited to introduce to you today Miss Ruth Dwyer. Miss Ruth Dwyer is an internationally known educator who works with the Indianapolis Children's Chorale. She also travels around and adjudicates and teaches many festivals and state honor choirs around the nation, um, as well as internationally. She's a fantastic human being, very, very lovely person, very kind, very caring, and she just knows a lot about music and the correct ways to teach kids. We were so lucky to have her with us in February, so I'll hand the ball over to her and she'll tell you about what she's did with the kids. Hello, my friends in Colorado. What a pleasure to work with your singers, and I hope that you enjoy watching the videos of our time together. What you're going to see, and hopefully what the children and youth learned from this experience, was a lot about vocal exploration and allowing the voice to come through the mask, um, or in your own studio, or your own bedroom, or your own space, allowing yourself that freedom to make sound and, and have a good time, but exploring the voice and what the voice can and cannot do. You'll see both the young and the old students, older students, learning a lot about articulation and being heard, all while having fun in a playful thing. We know that it takes many fewer repetitions to learn something new if it's done through play and done through music. It can take up to hundreds of repetitions if we just read it, if we just keep trying to memorize it. But if we do it learning in a playful way, we learn much faster. There's a lot of scientific uh, research on that. Well, my name is Mrs. Dwyer, and you know what is the coolest thing about my name? This. Can you all say Mrs. Dwyer has a choir? Can you say that Mrs. Dwyer has a choir? It rhymes. Isn't that cool? I I sing with choirs all the time and my name rhymes with the word choir. So it's like the perfect job for me. Yourself, can can you, you all unmute yourself? Hi. <laughs> hi. Hello. Everybody hi. say hello. hi, Mrs. Dwyer. Hello. Hi, Mrs. Hi, Mrs. Dwyer. Hi, Mrs. Dwyer. Stay unmuted. Hello. Unmute yourself a little bit. You got it. Okay. Can you all say, Mrs. Dwyer has a choir? Mrs. Dwyer has a choir. Has a choir. Choir, choir, choir. Choir, choir, choir. Excellent. Would you be my echo? Would you say, you got it. Can you say peanut butter, peanut butter? Peanut butter. Ginger snaps, ginger snaps. Ginger snaps. Ginger snaps. Ginger snaps. Ginger snaps. Rainbows. Rainbows. Oh, you're awesome. Oh, Miss Larissa, I like these people. They're good at vocal exploration. I like it. Say, I love music. I love music. With the littles, you'll see them exploring different songs from different countries and learning to be an active listener. An active listener means you have to be silent in order to hear something and then answer a question or about it or think about it. That's a real important thing for all of us to continue to do all our lives. To be an active listener as a teacher means that I'm going to stop and really listen to what the child is asking or thinking about, even if it probably doesn't have anything to do with music. I want to be respectful and kind, but I also want to be able to see their face and see what's going on behind that thought process. Often when a child asks a question, there's really more to it. And so we as teachers need to be active listeners, but children need to be active listeners in, to, in able to gain more new knowledge. Um, if they're always singing with you at the same time, they will sing less accurately. They need to sing with you, of course, but they need to also learn how to be a good listener, an active listener. Also with the littles, they 
um, you'll see them do an exercise on cognitive thinking. It's a reading exercise about comprehension. Only we didn't read anything. It's a story that does the same thing in early childhood. So they do a little story about Mr. Wiggle and Mr. Waggle. It's a finger play. It also does vocal exploration. It helps them find head voice through making hill sounds and playful sounds on, on the ski slope, I think is where, where we go on this one. And um, what they have to do is sequence the story. As we tell the story going forward, they're gonna help me tell the story going backwards. They have to remember what happened in the correct order. And Mr. Wiggle and Wiggle go up some hills of different sizes, so the big thing is, do they remember at the end of the story what happened at the beginning of the story? And, the, and can they tell me the reverse sequence of the story? We do a lot in music classes that prepare kids for reading or enhance their reading skills with comprehension and things like that. Can you unmute and share with us, sweetie? I know that song too. I love it. She said it in French. How many of you know those French words? Wow, Dylan does. Lots of kids. How many of you know it in English? It's Are You Sleeping, Brother John? Cool. Now, Ding, ding, dong, ding, ding, dong. Lucy knows the song. Lucy, would you like to sing it for us by yourself? Give it a try. Let us hear you sing it. Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping, Brother John? Brother John, morning bells are ringing. Morning bells are ringing. Ding, ding, dong. Ding, ding, dong. Give her a hand. That was awesome. Woo! So we have somebody who knows it in French and somebody who knows it in English. I know it in Spanish. With the older students, we did a lot with articulation, with vocal tone, and especially with vowels. The key to a good performance or a good choir is a choir that sings all the right rhythms, all the right words, all the right notes. A great choir has a teacher that teaches them to agree on the kind of vowels that they're going to create. Um, once we can all agree that we're going to sing a certain vowel the same way, then when we sing harmony, it's going to blend better. Because the best way to make music with other people is to also be a friend of that person. And that's really important that you know, I'm just a friendly person here tonight to share with you what I happen to know. So we're gonna talk about three things. We're gonna talk about vocal development. That's one of my specialties. My specialty with the voice is to teach a child to move into their adolescent voice or middle school voice and to help an adolescent move into their young adult voice. Right. We're also gonna talk about articulation. Everybody say articulation. Oh, I didn't see your mouth move. Everybody say articulation. Good job. Do you know how to unmute yourself? Everyone unmute yourself, please. Good, lots of you know how to unmute yourself. I call this the mass chaos moment, teachers. I like mass <laughs> chaos because Zoom doesn't work perfectly, but it's always a great thing. Would you all say the word articulation three times? Articulation. 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 We're going to see it. I love the mass chaos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great stuff. So we're going to come back. Totally awesome. Okay, so vocal development articulation and leadership. Would you show me the posture of a leader? Uh, has a lot to do with how people see you, don't they? If you're even sitting down, I know we're looking in screens and things, but if you hold yourself like a leader, you will be treated like a leader. Excellent. And look at those smiles. I'm like uh, Fiona. She has such a pleasant smile as she unmutes. 
how pleasant. There's, there's nothing more someone wants to see than somebody smiling. And that's a leadership skill, that you're smiling even when you're uncertain or not sure. Those are leadership skills. Okay. I love cookies. I love cookies. I love cookies. I heard what I do with you. I want to hear. I love cookies. Go. I love cookies. That's better. Peanut butter cookies. Peanut butter cookies. Oh, stretch up here. Ask my singers to sing a big, big, beautiful. Those were whole notes. They each got four beats. I love that we have um, McKenna nodding. She says, oh, that's familiar. I've done that before. And she has a nice smile too. Thank you for that beautiful smile. Can you sing me a big, beautiful ooh, please? Ready and go. Ooh. Bravo. So what is a teacher looking for when we're listening to an ooh vow, who knows what a teacher is listening for? So, is it Sayora? Is that how you say your name? What a pretty name. Sayora, can you tell us please, what is a teacher listening for? Rounded lips, cause um, yeah. What, because why? Cause it makes the sound, it makes the sound better. Sorry, not bitter. <laughs> like better. Kind of, like, <laughs> Yeah, better. And also it helps lift your soft palate a little more. It lifts your soft palate too. That's right. It lifts your soft palate charge. You're the conductor. No piano this time. It's acapella. Go ahead, my friend. Okay. So pleasant, so nice. And look at that. Did you see all those jaws drop? Because Sophia has such a relaxed jaw. Excellent. So space behind the teeth. Now, I'm getting very technical because you have so many older kids here. So I think they need to be taught at the high school and college level. And that's what I'm actually doing. So even if you're a young kid, you're right now getting a voice lesson at the college level. This is exactly how... I would talk about vowels in a, in a high school or college. So, so those are just a few of the things that we um, will explore or have explored by the time you've seen this um, in our uh, vocal explorations with the Boulder Children's Choir. So thank you for having me. It's a lot of fun.